When ABBA came into the mix in 1976, the big bands we knew met their Waterloo for these Swedes had a new bag of tricks. Bill Common minor Freunde to the week ending 29th of March 1976 and perhaps the most remarkable top 10 we have ever seen yet. And getting us underway is Donna Summer with her pulsating love to love you baby, the heavyweight champion of Euro Disco. While there had been dance oriented records making significant inroads on the charts since 1974 and 5000 volts had just had a sizable hit with I'm on fire, there was still a sniffy suspicion of disco as being fey and inauthentic. But summer had lightning in a bottle here, slow lasting lightning. There was never another record like this and it deserved more than its peak of number four. The recent death of Dan McCaffrey, he died the day that I wrote this, casts a pall over this week's number nine, Love Hurts by Nazareth, on which Dan did sterling vocal duties. This song was a steady ballad as opposed to Jim Capaldi's version, which was also in the top 10 this week, which was lighter and poppier. On the whole, that was the more successful version, getting to number six. But Nazareth did stay in the top 10 for a month, and to my mind of thinking, was the more memorable of the two versions. Eight is Aussie chart stalwart Sherbet with one of their best hits, The Galloping Child's Play, a single which shows the last vestiges of the proggy band they started out as. Peaking at four, it did respectable business, but it was their next single that was to be legend-defining for Sherbet. At number seven, it's ABBA with their yo-yo hit Ring Ring, which wobbled up and down the charts for some times. It's a bright, punchy single with lyrics by Neil Sedaka and amazingly never made the ABBA Gold Greatest Hits compilation. First released in 1973 when the band was known as Bjorn, Benny and Anna and Frida, it's always mystified me slightly that this song was not to join the class of ABBA uberbangers writ so boldly in our chart history. Number six is Jim Capaldi's version of Love Hurts, the old Everly Brothers song. It's pleasant and all, but a peak of number six seems just about right. And here's a section where we greet the coming and grieve the going from this week's charts. It's hello and goodbye. New to the top 10 this week are Love to Love You Baby, up from 12 to 10, Love Hurts by Nazareth, 11 to 9, and the remarkable Fernando by ABBA, up from 14 to 2. Its chart history thus far was a staggering 75 to 14 to 2. Expunged from the top 10 this week with a poptacular Julianne by Kenny, the must have it every drunken sing alongy goodness of Slippin' Away by Max Merritt and the Meteors, and Barry Manilow, whose I Write the Songs Bad Farewell. The next number one single, well, if you go 25, 14, 2, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. But the next number one after that was so distant in the future, not only was it not on the charts, but it's very possible that half its audience hadn't even been born yet. At number five, it's Maxine Nightingale with her upbeat and earwormy right back where we started from. Maxine was a scuffling veteran of the UK scene since the late 60s and was in fact only called to sing this song for a demo. The producer liked her performance and paid her a hundred pound fee for the session, but then drove it to United Artists and played them the demo whereupon they signed her. She had a hit or two more in the UK, but this was the end of the line here in Australia. But there are worse records to be remembered for. Number four is the Ted Mullery Gang's ridiculously rocked up version of Darktown Strutter's Ball, a song that dates to 1917. Of course, it'd never get played on the radio today, but it has spent 10 weeks in the top 10, including four weeks at number three, in an unchanged top three through April, bridging the gap between their mega hit Jump In My Car and the excellent Crazy, one of the best Australian singles of the 1970s. 
Number three is an odd little record, C.W. McCall's Convoy. McCall was an interesting guy. His real name was Billy Fires, and his day job was as an advertising executive who crossed over to being a voice artist, voicing a series of humorous bread advertisements with his character as good old boy C.W. McCall. Local popularity, plus the CB radio craze, saw McCall cut his novelty record, which got picked up by MGM, and ended up spending three weeks on top of the charts in March, where it tumbled off the charts pretty quickly thereafter. McCall was not to be deterred and went on to greater success in his advertising business and eventually became mayor of his hometown in the 1980s. Number two this week is Abba's Epic Fernando, which was next week to assume the number one mantle, a position it was not to relinquish for 14 straight weeks spending six months in the top 10 and staying in the top 100 until the week before Christmas. After it left number one, ABBA had three more number one hits while Fernando was still on the charts. Those number one hits were I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, Dancing Queen and Money, Money, Money. All up, it spent 40 weeks on the charts, up until Elton John's Candle in the Wind 97, this was the biggest selling record ever in Australia. Which is off, of course, because I find it really hard to warm to this song. It's tuneful enough, but not really tuneful enough to distract you from the frankly dippy lyrics. The vocals by Frida are a touch stagey. Frida had released it as a solo single in Sweden in 1975. But the harmonies are rich and pleasant. It was a Saturday night fixture. Great songs came and went, but for over three months, the inevitable conclusion of Countdown was the playing of Fernando. In honour of this week's number two, we have renamed this section Fowl's Fernando-tastic World of Facts. Top riser this week was All By Myself by Eric Carmen, which left a Fernando dwarfing 16 places, 38 to 22, whereas the biggest faller was ACDC's It's a Long Way to the Top, which demonstrated it was a very short way to the bottom, falling from number 11 to number 40. Highest debutante this week was No Regrets by Scott Walker and the Walker Brothers, which popped in at number 35. And the longest lingering hit was Mamma Mia by ABBA. Yes, it was still in the top 40, as was SOS, which had hung around for 28 weeks. In the USA, the number one was The Four Seasons with Oh What A Night, and the UK saw Save Your Kisses For Me by The Brotherhood Of Man in the midst of a six week run at the top. Looking back a year, it was the bopping Please Mr. Postman by The Carpenters, which utterly dominated. And casting our gaze a year forward, it was the patently awful torn between two lovers by Mary McGregor. The top album in town this week was almost inevitably the best of ABBA. Apparently this is still the sixth biggest selling album ever in Australia. Be that as it may, it spent 16 weeks atop the charts here, and then they released Dancing Queen and made the whole thing redundant. It's time for our marvellous Monkey Monty to drum us into the chart topper this week. Here's a hint, it's the other song in the top 40 that goes on about Mamma Mia. It's Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen hanging in at number one. After the ascent of Fernando, Bo Rap spent seven weeks at number two and it had been number two for two weeks before it got to number one, knocking off Convoy, and 17 weeks totally spent in the top 10. Of all the songs we've seen in the survey, only SOS's Seven Weeks Behind Mamma Mia comes close to weeks in the penultimate slot. It's still one of the best loved songs ever across three generations of fans. Well, there we have it. An amazing top 10 full of fascinating songs and fascinating stories. And if the good Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be back with a new instalment in a week or so-ish.